Uh, uh, this, this uh, Dr. Shafiq. Shafiq, uh, so do I need an operation? Uh, yes. You need to operation. Yes, sir. Eh? Yeah. So I have to go to operating theatre. Yes. Oh, yo. So how can you, can you look after me? Sure, sure. Sure, okay. Eh? So, so uh, I need to do an operation. If you're anxious, don't worry. Don't worry. Because in this video, I will tell you what to expect if you need to go to the operating theatre to have surgery. Cheers. Guys. The operating theatre is a sterile environment. It's kept clean and sterile to prevent the growth of organisms which can cause infection during surgical procedures. There are two types of personnel. The surgeons who scrub up with the scrub nurses and the anaesthetist and his assistant who doesn't need to scrub up. So I'm going to show you how the staff enters the theatre which is sterile and clean and also how a patient enters the theatre. Cheers! So now I'm going to enter the operating theatre. As a staff, there is a staff entrance you see with security. I swipe my card, I enter the theatre and then you have to keep leave your shoes here and take a set of fresh scrubs to wear. So the OT is a sterile environment, you need to change your clothes, okay? So I'm going to change now. <laughs> Put a cap. All personnel need to wear a cap to cover their heads in the operating theatre. This is to prevent any contamination of the air or the open wound from any loose hair which can drop into op the operative feet. In the operating theatre, we all need to wear a mask. This is for two reasons. One is to prevent uh, infection, also to prevent the open wounds during surgery from being contaminated from coughing or sneezing. So, when you put a mask, the blue side must be outside and the white side should be inside. Make sure you cover your nose, your mouth and your chin appropriately. So you pinch your nose here and see I'm covering my nose, my mouth and my chin and so we are properly protected. Cheers! Now as a patient, if you come to the operating theatre, you are wheeled into the theatre on your bed and there is an airlock where you need to go through. The purpose of this airlock is to prevent a contaminated air coming from outside entering the operating theatre. So once you enter the airlock, the outer door closes as you see here. Once the outer door closes, the inner door opens and you are wheeled into the theatre. In this way, there is no contamination of air from the environment and outside into the theatre. In the OT reception, a pre-op checklist is done. The patient will be identified using his name and medical registration number and sometimes even his birth date. The type of surgery will be re-ascertained with the patient also the site of surgery and also whether the patient has been fasted. The consent for the surgery and anesthesia is checked again with the patient. Once all of this has been checked again by the OT counter nurse, only then is the patient wheeled into the operating theatre. So this is the operating theatre. As you see, the staff are preparing the theatre. You can see the tech nurses preparing the table and this is my anaesthetic machine which I used to give general anaesthetic and this is my nurse field us preparing the equipment and the circuits for the anaesthesia. We also have an x-ray viewer in theatre. This is for the surgeons to look at the x-rays while operating. So always remember to bring your x-rays if you have any to the operating theatre. So sterility is very important in during operations. You see my nurse Atika is scrubbing. Sure a good amount of soap is needed to create the lather for the three to five minutes scrub which is needed to, to make the hands clean and free from microorganisms. This is because the skin is a major source of contamination in the operating theatre. 
Now Stavna's Rohana, after scrubbing her hands, she's putting the sterile down. It's a special way of putting it on, you see. And make sure it's all sterile. Like no contamination of the scrub suit. Stavna's Rohana is not a top lesson in technical <laughs> Why are you scrubbing your hands, sir? Huh? Why are you scrubbing your hands? Why? Before your surgery? Uh, to, this is to, to make sure that our hands are clean uh -huh. and uh, when we are doing the surgery, to make sure to prevent uh, infection during the surgery and also after the surgery. Okay. In the operating theatre, there are two areas. One is the sterile area where the surgeons and scrub nurses uh, operate and then the other area is a non-sterile but clean area where the anesthetist and his assistant operate. It's over here. So nurses are now uh, counting the equipment to make sure it's all accounted for before the surgery starts. Scrub nurse Chai is wearing a sterile gown, that means she's sterile. Anything blue in OT is considered sterile. The operating theatre has a lamina airflow and the airflow, as you see from the arrows, from the top here, from the air vents, from the HEPA filter and the airflow goes right down to the vents at the bottom here. And there are 15 air exchanges per hour. This is to maintain the sterility of the operating theatre. So before any anesthetic is given, you need to establish intravenous access, meaning you need to put a cannula into an intravenous vein to give the anesthetic. This is how we do it. So there are two types of anesthesia. General anesthesia where the patient is unconscious during surgery and regional anesthesia where the patient is given a block to block his limb a part of his limb for surgery but and he can be awake during surgery but feels no pain. Yes. So when we give a general anesthetic, we always have to give the patient a little bit of oxygen first before we put him off to sleep. So the patient breathes oxygen, fills up the lung with oxygen and then we put them off to sleep. After the oxygen, then we inject the anesthetic agent. Here I'm injecting some propofol for them to sleep. My anesthetic assistant, Stubbness Chu, is now checking the patient's vital signs. We always check the vital signs regularly throughout the surgery to make sure everything is stable. Dr. Palani is one of our top uh, surgeons, orthopedic surgeons and <laughs> micro surgeons. So why are you wearing this sterile gown when you operate, Dr. Palani? <laughs> Prevent wound contamination. Oh, okay, so it's clean environment, so yeah. no infection of the wound. Okay. Cheers. <laughs> Sometimes the surgeon can also operate through keyhole surgery, meaning the incisions on the tummy are just the size of a keyhole. This is being done by Dr. Kenneth Koh here. This is good for the patient because there's less pain after the operation and there's faster recovery. We also have robotic surgery in clinicals. So we have the Da Vinci robotic surgical system in clinical. As you see here, these are the arms of the robots which are attached to the patient. And these are the controls for the robot. The surgeon sits here and controls the movements of the robotic hands. 
Dr. Lo Chitsin, our urologist, is one of the top robotic surgeons in Glenda. See here, Dr. Lo is draping the robotic arms with sterile drapes. How long have you been doing this robot, Archie? More than 10 years. More than 10 years, eh? What's the advantage of a robot? Eh? Uh, more the experience. <laughs> more um, precision. More comfortable for the patient. But actually, you can do a lot more with the robot than with your hands. Okay. Because it's more steady. So more dexterous. Oh, okay. So these are the arms of the robot, all covered with sterile surgical drapes, ready to be docked to the patient. The robot is then moved in for docking to the patient, as you see here. Dr. Lo now is seen attaching the robotic arms to the probes which are into the patient and he then controls these movements of the probes from the console which I showed you earlier. Uh, Miss Lau is one of our top robotic nurses who is very experienced. She's been to Taiwan to learn about operating the robot. Lau, how do you feel? Korea. Korea? Oh, sorry, she went to Korea to learn about how to handle robotic equipment. So after the robot has been docked, then the surgeon, Dr. Lo, will move on to his uh, console where he controls the uh, movements of the robotic hands. Okay. Chit, how much the machine robot costs? Eh? The cost of this? Uh, I believe it's about 12 million. 12 million, eh? Ringgit, yeah. So you can see here the robotic hands are being controlled by Dr. Lo from the console allowing for more precise surgery, less blood loss, all done with smaller surgical wounds, resulting in a more comfortable patient post-operatively and faster recovery. So sometimes we can give a regional anesthesia, we block one or two legs for the anesthesia. So the patient doesn't need to be asleep but feels no pain during the surgery. For this patient who needs an operation below the waist, I'm going to do a spinal anesthetic. Local anesthetic to numb the skin, we put a spinal needle in. Then I give my local anesthetic. So, with the spinal anesthetic, the patient will be numb from the waist right below. That means any surgery done below the waist can be done safely and pain-free even though the patient is awake. Cheers! All the equipment used and the swaps and the sutures used are all accounted for. There's a checklist which is done twice when the surgery is going on and at the end of surgery so that nothing is lost or unaccounted for. The operating theatre is a very cold environment. As you see here, the temperature is 19 degrees with a humidity of 59.8%. This is to ensure there is no spread of germs to the open wounds of the patient. If you are worried about feeling cold in the theatre, don't worry. We have a lot of things to make you warm. Number one, we have warm blankets. See, kept in this warming cabinet here. Blanket is nice and warm, you see. So this blanket is nice and warm to keep you warm if you are cold in the theater. We also have this radiant heaters which generate a heated light to keep you warm if you feel cold. We also have these bear huggers to keep you warm. This is a force air warming device which generates warm air under a special blanket which can keep you warm in the cold operating theatre. I feel nice and warm now. And finally, we also have this electric blanket to keep you nice and warm in the theatre if it's cold. <laughs> okay? Okay. So after the surgery, the patients are wheeled to the post-anesthetic care unit for observations before they are discharged to the ward.
You can see here their vital signs are being monitored in the post anaesthetic care unit. How long you keep the patient in the recovery? Sorry, Dada. How long the patient in the recovery? 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Then if they are okay? Then we can send back to the room. Oh, okay. So what do you when can they go back? When they are awake? Yeah. Some more? Uh if no complaint of pain. No pain? The vital sign is stable. Vital sign is stable. Alright. <laughs> Thank you. So I hope you guys enjoyed my video on what to expect if you come to the operating theatre to have surgery. So don't worry, we have very well trained staff to take care of you, make sure everything goes well. A lot of checklists so to make sure nothing goes wrong and you have a pleasant time in the operating theatre. Cheers!